Dr. Dale Okorodudu. He is a graduate of the Med School at the University of Missouri, also got his undergraduate degree here, and we'll introduce him now and uh, talk more about his career since graduating at the University of Missouri and the reason that we're talking to him after we welcome him. Doctor, I know they call you Dr. Dale. I like to uh, try my best, though, to uh, respect your your full name, Dr. Dale Okorodudu. Welcome. How are you today, sir? Hey, I'm doing great. Thank you for having me. I appreciate uh, having my voice back in Columbia. It's good to be talking to you also. So i um, graduate of the med school in 2010. Let's talk about where you have gone since then and where you are doing your practicing and your teaching right now, because you do both. I do. I do. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I finished the Mizzou Med in 2010. And after that, I went out to Durham, North Carolina, to Duke, where I did my internal medicine training. And after that, I ended up in Dallas, Texas, where I live right now. And I did my pulmonary and critical care training here. And now I'm on faculty at UC Southwestern Medical Center, work out of the Dallas VA Medical Center. So it's been a bit of journey, but I'm back home in Texas where I started. It's good to be able to uh, talk to you from probably a warmer place than what we are this morning. Um, the, <laughs> the reason we're talking to you is because you have a new documentary film out. It's called Black Men in White Coats that picks up a name of something that you've also started in other uh, areas and other things that you have done with that same title. This documentary film is going to be available for us to view coming up very shortly, February 12th through the 17th. Talk, uh, if you would, please, about putting together this documentary and why you hope people will watch this. Yeah, sure. I mean, it's, it's been a, a long journey. So, you know, people say, how long did it take you to make the film? And, you know, it took you the past two years. And I said, actually, it's been about eight years because it's been in my mind and I've been formulating this for a long time. But the past two years, we finally got the resources to make it. Um, great director, Michael Autry, out of, out of uh, North Texas here with me. And, you know, making the film was, was important to us because, there's, there's not enough diversity in medicine, and that has real patient outcomes. And for anybody who doesn't quite understand that, just look at what's happening with COVID right now. Um, a, a part of that deals with, you know, uh, disparities in healthcare and things of that sort, and that can be addressed in part by having a more diverse medical workforce. So specifically, black men and that going into the field of medicine was decreasing. So that's why we started Black Men and White Coats back in 2013. And you, we, we did a lot of stuff, which was great, and it's still great. We still do all those activities and programming. However, we wanted to make sure that we could get the message out to the broader masses and inform them and call everybody to action. And for that, we needed something bigger, and that's why we made the documentary. What are the numbers right now as far as med school applications or graduates of med school? I don't know if you have any of those statistics handy of black men in this country going through the med school and, and, and coming out as doctors. Yeah, so you're getting about um, going in. You know, in the past, we're probably around in the 500 ranges, like 530s or so. Um, this past recent years, we're getting into about the 600s, meaning black men going into medical school, so about 600 or so. You compare that to about, you know, 20-something thousand total that are going into med school. So it's this very small percentage. You're talking 2 to 3% of people starting to go into medical school are black men, which is, which is extremely low when you compare that to where we are in the population. Are there more black women going into the career in the field? There are. And, um, actually, there's more women going into the field of medicine across the board now. So um, the black women were the first group to surpass the, the counterpart, right? So black women passed black males before any other group. Now, overall, women are going into medical school at higher rates than, um, than men in general. I'm going to just... Should also mention, oh, go ahead. I should also mention, so people always say, well, why is it black men and white coats, not black men and women? Um, so what happened back in 2012 or so when Dr. Mark Nevay, he figured that he figured this out for years and decades. We thought the number of black people in general going to the medical field was actually increasing. But what was really going on was the number of black women was increasing while the number of black men was going down. So that's why we started all this. All the other groups were going up, but black men specifically were going down, and that was the problem. The, um, the documentary will be used to raise the awareness. How are you going to reach those? I think you had, you had good encouragement to go into this field. There are probably some very sharp individuals, black men, black young men who had the talent and the ability to go into the medical field, but they don't have the opportunities. They don't have either the finances or they don't have the people encouraging them to do so. Is that the biggest reason that they would not be going into this field? Um, yeah, that's definitely a huge reason that they, they would go into this field. Um, and it's difficult to say what the number one reason is, but that's definitely a huge reason. Like you said, I, you know, I grew up two parents in a household, siblings who went on to do you know, wonderful things. Um, you know, I got to Mizzou and I met great mentors the Express Program, Linda Blocker, Susan Reed, or Rob Weaver, Dr. Ellis Ingram. Right? So I had great people around me. Um, with this documentary, part of what we're trying to do is 
you know, raise that awareness and then have a call to action to, to make things like that possible for other kids to say, hey, you know, we talk about mental, we talk about all those things and try to say, hey, we need to be doing this for everybody. And, you know, really we're trying to get this film to as many, um, you know, high school counselors and such as we can mm-hmm. so they kind of understand our perspective. What have you learned about mentorship and mentors, those you've had and those who now look to you as a mentor? Um, I've learned that mentorship is a very difficult thing, right? So I think one of the biggest issues with mentorship is people think they're being mentors and people think they have mentors. Um, I, I won't go into it in detail, but if you all have time, you should go look at where the word mentor comes from. It comes from the, the story, the Odyssey, and it's a, it's a very deep thing. So I think the most challenging thing is thinking you have a mentor when you really don't, because mentorship takes a lot of investment to, to grow a tree, essentially. Um, but finding a real mentor is probably the hardest part. When, after you find a real mentor, you know, you, you, you've, you've done most of the work there. What are I, I, I've liked, I've read several things that you've said about mentorship, and that's why I ask you that question, and that's why I'm going to ask you another question on that. Uh, f- some of the myths about mentorship, I thought you made a good point in one thing that I read that you had said, and that is you don't have to look like the person you're mentoring, or you don't have to share the background. What do you have to have, though, to be a, a, an effective mentor? That's a good, great point, David. I do, I do want to echo what you're saying right there. So some of my greatest mentors are, are white men, right? Uh, white women who are mentors, so they don't need to look like you to be a mentor. Um, The most important thing is they need to truly care about your success. Um, So they need to be willing to put the time in to watch you, to be there to pick up your phone. Those are, that's that's the most important thing that you want to look for in a mentor. Um, Because a mentor has to take the time to get to know you. They they need to know you so they can understand how to guide you. Um, Everybody doesn't get the same guidance. People are different. And you can't give me the guidance I need if you don't take that time to know me. And that's one part. The other part is, of course, they have to be skilled in whatever it is that, that you, you want to go into, right? So you want to make sure you get somebody who, who can give you the right wisdom for the career, the path that you're choosing to follow. Let me uh, let you go in just a moment. One of the questions I'm going to ask you in a minute is how people can see this, this uh, documentary, Black Men in White Coats. But before I do that, sometimes it would be nice just to see the white coat. Uh, whether it would be a um, black or white man or woman or any other background in that. How far do you think we are from getting to a point? Maybe it varies from geographical location or rural, urban. I don't know. What experiences are you having that would help us to understand the difficulty in progressing to a point where it would be we're respecting the coat and who's in it has shown that they are that they have passed all the tough tests that go along with achieving a medical degree? Yeah, and that's, that's definitely challenging. And, again, that's one of the things that we are trying to work on doing here is, is that perception. Um, you know, real quick to your point, if I'm walking in the hospital and I'm wearing my white coat, I'm treated completely different you know, than if I'm not wearing the white coat. If I'm not wearing the white coat, I've been mistaken for the hospital transport and everything, right? Um, but with the white coat, it's, it's completely different. So, you know, the, the white coat itself, David, it, it, it's important. Um, however, I'm going to take a kind of a step back and say that, we shouldn't have to, I shouldn't have to wear a white coat to be, to be respected. I shouldn't have to wear a white coat, you know, to, to be treated in a certain way. Um, people should base their decisions and judgments on people after they've engaged with them, not before they've engaged with them. Hmm. So I, I would just say the main thing there is people need to give other people a chance to engage with them before they start making conclusions about them. Um, and after that, then you can look at the white coat and be, and be excited about showing the white coats. But everybody, everybody deserves a chance before you judge them. No, that's about the wisest thing I'm going to hear. I could shut off the microphone for the rest of the, rest of the week. We won't hear anything as important of what you just said. Uh, I appreciate that. Let's talk about uh, how people can see the documentary film Black Men in White Coats. Yeah, certainly. So um, bmwcmovie.com, bmwcmovie.com. We're offering a February pass. You can go on there. I think it's twelve ninety nine or so. But specifically in Columbia, Missouri, University of Missouri, um, doing a great job. They're going to be hosting virtual screenings. So make sure you're keeping up with the University of Missouri. Um, and I'll just say one last thing before I hop off. We really need everybody's help. We don't have Hollywood type of money to market this thing. So we need everybody to watch, everybody to share, hashtag BMWC movie, and just help us make this thing be successful from a grassroots level. And when he says BMWC, he's abbreviating the title, Black Men in White Coats, BMWC. Did you say movie or film? movie movie black men in white coats bmwc movie and you can find out more through the school of medicine at the university of missouri well dr adele okorodudu i've appreciated your time today and what you've shared with us thank you so much best of luck i i really enjoyed our conversation thank you sir it is columbia morning you're listening to kfru